Has the difference between an alpha and omega mutant ever confused you? Well, you are at the right place to have all your questions put to rest. I am going to examine what you might need to know. Today, we look at classifications of X-Men's mutants. Marvel ranks these mutants using the biomutative classification, which considers the mutant's abilities and proficiency. This popular system uses the Greek alphabet, but still needs refinement. The only clearly defined level is Omega, which is still somewhat unclear. So what's an Omega mutant, and why are these so special? This has had fans buzzing, especially after the Sentinels in the new X-Men 97 labeled Storm as one. Omega mutants have the highest potential, considered the most powerful by Marvel. But what about the others? Mutants classification in Marvel is as old as mutants themselves, and remains complex and intriguing. With such a history, it's no surprise there's a detailed system to measure and compare mutants' powers, a system we are about to explore together. Basic abilities like super strength or speed can fit into any category, but what about the unquantifiable ones? Marvel tried to address this with the Greek alphabet scheme. Initially, writers used inconsistent terms like Alpha and Omega. In 2019, Marvel introduced the Dawn of X, establishing a more official mutants classification system. This new system focuses on the mightiest mutants, especially Omega level mutants. This structure considers specific powers, meaning a mutant with multiple abilities may have only one at an Omega level, while others are at lower levels. For example, Jean Grey is an Omega level telepath, but her telekinesis while high level isn't at Omega status. They classify mutants like Jubilee, who generates explosive energy at a lower level because of the less destructive nature of their powers. Despite the broad spectrum of mutants' powers, from world ending threats to minor abilities, mutants are a constant in the Marvel Universe. Many entities, including the X-Men, Shield and the Shia Empire use the classification system. It helps manage diversity and maintain order in the mutant world. The mutants level scale categorizes mutants based on their threat level and powers. Considering their danger to society, the force needed to subdue them, and overall lethality. Omega level mutants, like Legion with its multiple personalities, each with its power, rank high. Most consider Magneto, who manipulates metal with devastating potential as an Omega mutant. Mutants like Beak, with a beak, or Bailey Hoskins, who can explode once but dies, rank low and seem less threatening. Here's where it gets tricky. The system has evolved over the years, with classifications like Delta or Zeta appearing online but not in the official canon. Officially, there are six primary levels. Alpha, Beta, Epsilon, Omega in S616, and Gamma in S295. Beast even mentioned Omicron in another alternate reality. The system can be confusing with sub ratings for specific powers like healing or psychic abilities. One can be Omega level in one area and much lower in another. To keep it simple, we will focus on these six primary levels. Knowing these levels helps gauge how fast you should run if a mutant appears in your town, or if you're an X-Man, what your survival chances are. From God tier lethal to practically harmless, the range of mutants' powers is vast and varied. Now, let's break down these major categories of mutants' power classification. Epsilon mutants are at the bottom of the power spectrum. These mutants possess either non-combative abilities or physical mutations that don't come with special powers. Think of them as the forgotten, possessing more unique quirks than world hidden abilities. Take Artimatix for example. Its power, projecting simple holograms. Now that isn't an excellent power to have in a fight, but I'm sure it would come in handy at parties. Next up is Beak. This guy's name explains everything. He has a beak. The mutants from the Epsilon level aren't really a danger to humanity. Their mutation powers, which can be ridiculously odd, cause them to fade into the background. Moving up a notch, we have Delta level mutants. These are people with minor powers who stay tolerably out of the way for most of their lives. Even more so, they fit in well with typical human communities. For instance, Loa can face through solid objects, except those objects break apart right after. Wallflower can release and control pheromones. And then there's Domino, who is just super lucky. These are all quiet, often passive and rarely cause much chaos. Simply put, Epsilon level mutants have to struggle to belong. However, the Delta mutants can lead everyday lives, doing nothing too flashy with their abilities. Both groups have various mutant powers that range from the barely noticeable to the intriguingly subtle. Gamma mutants have potent mutations, but with these incredible gifts come great curses. Too often, mutants receive powers they can't control or powers that inconvenience them in their everyday lives. Plus, they look like freaks of nature. Magos, for example, was blue and had two giant maggots inside him. That's not the sort of image you can pull off in everyday public. Nightcrawler possesses the power of teleportation, yet his lack falls short because of his blue demon-like appearance and the risk of teleporting into walls if he's not careful. Then there's Beast, another big blue guy. If a mutant looks odd and has a niche power, they are Gamma. Beta mutants have useful powers, but with significant limitations. Their abilities are practical, but have yet to be beyond all. Rogue is a classic example. She could absorb others' powers and memories, which was very useful but uncontrolled, hurting many other people and herself. Wolverine's healing factor is another beta power. It was ideal until his adamantium skeleton started poisoning him. Maro can protrude wounds, but can't heal rapidly. Strong guy absorbs kinetic energy to gain strength, but risks his life each time he uses it. Then there's Chamber, whose mutation allows him to shoot energy blast, but only because his X-Gene activation blew off his lower face and chest. 
Beta mutants have practical powers that work well in particular situations. However, they have harsh drawbacks and limited combat potential. This doesn't apply to all, but one could almost label them as practical mutants. All gamma mutants' unmanageable power and monstrous appearance make their life a great tragedy. A beta mutant whose abilities are of practical application is susceptible to a limited consequence. Alpha mutants have the powers you are most familiar with in the Marvel Universe. Its abilities are impressive and valuable. The mutants can control them pretty well. Cyclops, for example, shoots energy beams from his eyes cool and handy in the fight. Rogue used to be a beta level mutant, but has increased the control over powers and risen to alpha level after the X-Men the Sire complex storyline. All this means that the mutants can increase their control and rank in through practice. When looking for potential members of the tour, Kitty Pride found files listing alpha level mutants, including Franklin Richards, Phoenix, Legion, Professor X, Storm, Nemo, Sebastian Shaw, Havoc and Sinister, which we now know to be false with some of these characters, or this could refer to specific identified abilities they possess. It also hinted at the existence of other likely alpha mutants, though she stopped searching any further. Later, Apocalypse assembled mutants for the 12, 11 of which he called alpha mutants, including Magneto, Polaris, Storm, Iceman, Sunfire, Cyclops, Phoenix, Xavier, Cable, Bishop and Rasputin. Notably, several of these alpha mutants proved to be classified as Omega level, showing a convergence of power levels. The Alpha category appears again in the Age of Apocalypse, where they label people like Logan as Alpha class. These mutants were some of the deadliest and most potent, often involved in huge conflicts and rebellions. Alpha class mutants are not to be trifled with, capable of causing major citywide problems. When they team up like the X-Men or Magneto screw the Brotherhood of Mutants, critical or world shutting chaos is to be expected. Cyclops, Nemo and Mr. Sinister exemplify this attitude well enough. Strong enough to evade a fight, but not world ending sufficient to matter. Alpha mutants are your classic superheroes and villains, with formidable powers and reasonable control, making them central figures in the Marvel Universe. Omega level mutants are the creme de la creme of mutants' powers. These mutants sit at the very top, with abilities that have no defined limits. How does one reach the level of an Omega? Let's break it down with some simple help from Magneto and Forge. According to the House of X number 1, an Omega falls somewhere between Magneto and Forge in terms of power. Magneto controls magnetism, while Forge is a top notch technopath. The key difference is that others can surpass Forge's powers, but no one can surpass Magneto's. This makes Magneto Omega level and Forge not. Multiple mutants can share the Omega status for the same power type. For example, Jean Grey and Quentin Pye are both Omega telepaths. And my first one not an Omega class mutant is also an Omega class telepath. I know, it gets kind of confusing and murky. Mago hasn't really figured it out, you can't blame me for that. Currently, about 25 recognized Omega level mutants exist, including prominent figures like Magneto, Jean Grey, Storm, and Iceman, along with recent additions like Iska the Unbeaten and Tan the Uncaring. Mutants can achieve Omega level status either naturally or through augmentation. Iceman developed his powers over time to reach Omega status. Blacksmith and Strife temporarily elevated Cable to Omega level, despite his usual limitation from suppressing the techno organic virus. The Cable from the Age of Apocalypse universe, Nathan Summers, showed that when Cable did not have the techno organic virus, he was quite easily classifiable as an Omega level mutant. By mimicking Cable's abilities, Hope Summers also displayed Omega level telekinesis as well. Interestingly, Charles Xavier's list of Omegas in House of X number 1 doesn't include himself. Despite his powerful telepathy, he is classified as an Alpha Psi or telepath. Perhaps he's being modest, or Marvel and Xavier are holding back some secrets. Omega level mutants aren't just powerful, they can be global threats. Even among healers, Omega levels exist. Alexia and White Sword are prime examples of Omega level healing abilities. Fans and sometimes Marvel considers a few mutants as beyond Omega. Concerning these power levels among mutants, beyond Omega is the most significant magnitude that mutants can be. These mutants redefine the limits of what is possible with their abilities, much farther than the already impressive Omega classification. Franklin Richards, claimed by Galactus to be the most powerful mutant ever to exist, falls under this category. His reality warping powers enable him to create entire universes. Despite Franklin's retcon has not been a true mutant, his power level remains unmatched. Others like Vulcan at some point and Matthew Malloy have also garnered the Beyond Omega label because of their immense power level. Malloy was powerful enough to manipulate reality, resist other mutants' powers, and resurrect himself after his death. Professor X created mental blocks on Matthew as a child that no longer held. His powers resurfaced, causing cataclysmic events. Miranda, introduced in the X-Men worst X-Man ever, is from an alternate universe with reality editing powers. She can literally create new timelines. Marvel used Miranda to explain the reason behind many of Marvel's character retcons. Beast labeled her as an Omicron mutant to describe her unique abilities. While Omega level mutants are powerful, those beyond Omega push the boundaries even further. Beta and Gamma class mutants often have similar capabilities, with differences mainly in control and physical mutations. Imagine two equally powerful mutants, one alpha level and the other gamma, with purple skin and pink polka dots. 
The lines can get blurry since Marvel doesn't always spell out the details, but I've tried my hardest to keep it clear. Mutant classifications sometimes become a mess, and characters often shift categories. Once listed as Alpha in the 90s, Jean Grey and Franklin Richards are now Omega and House of X number 1 that was released in 2019. And even then, Franklin Richards is no longer considered a mutant now again. Changes in classification often depend on the writer or changing storylines. Sometimes, mutants with multiple powers might straddle different classifications. Wolverine's heightened senses fall under beta, whereas the ceiling factor is alpha. In such a case, they classify mutants by their most potent power. Some outstandingly powerful mutants remain unclassified, including Margin Justice, The Marquis of Death, Demiurge, Hyperstorm, Apocalypse, Madeline Pryor, Santa Claus, Onslaught, and Mr. Immortal. Likely, with these classifications, Marvel's system will change again. After all, comics are fluid, power levels change as stories are told. So even if this classification gets a little naughty, it's beneficial for keeping track of mutant abilities. In comics, one should look out for surprises and be prepared for the unexpected. Mutant classes can change, more levels introduced, and our favorite characters will continue to evolve. And I guess that's all for this video folks. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with someone who you know will love this video. Also, don't forget to let me know about what you think about mutant classifications. Until next time guys, stay awesome.